rubber, natural and synthetic, getting the business in a Bambury mixer, being kneaded and rolled and thoroughly mixed with the other ingredients that will allow it to be molded into shape to perform one or more of rubber's hundreds of important jobs. Is this a big rubber making plant in Ohio or Connecticut? No, it's a small plant in a small town in the West. Thermoid Western Company of Nephi, Utah. When proper consistency has been reached, the rubber is cut into slabs for storage. As needed, the slabs are fed between the heated rollers of a warm-up mill, from which it moves on, now very pliable, to be formed into anything from a length of hose to a radiator fan belt. When pressed into and around strong cotton or nylon webbing, the result is a conveyor belt. After fabrication, all such products require extensive curing. One important and fairly new application for rubber has been as a lining for tanks to hold chemicals that would destroy or be contaminated by the bare metal. The sections firmly glued to the steel are vulcanized together to create an impervious barrier. Industrial hose, another product of this very versatile plant. The rubber is forced out through a die in what is called the extrusion process. It goes into a cooling bath, then onto an endless belt. Cut off in lengths, it too will be cured before three outer layers, one of cotton and two of steel wire, are braided around it. Here's how the cotton and steel coverings are woven. Isn't that something? Hoses that will be subjected to tremendous internal forces must be carefully tested to make sure the margin of safety will never be exceeded. With a protective barrier in place, the pressure goes to 4,500 pounds per square inch and beyond. The safety factor in most industrial equipment is so well provided for these days that users of the equipment tend to take it for granted. <laughs> <laughs>